Hello, fellow plant people. Welcome back if you're returning to my channel. If you are new, my name is Jen and I go by the Leafy Geek here and also on Instagram. And I'm in my new plant space. New and improved, I should say. This was my spare bedroom. I recently kind of updated it to create more of a den feeling slash creative studio filming space for myself. And also, of course, surrounded by plants. It's the room that gets the best light in my house. I did make a video kind of introducing you to that new space and the way I have it set up now. Uh, and I will make sure to link that both in the cards and then also in the description below. I'll link that video uh, if you wanted to go check it out. Uh, but yay, I'm really excited. I love this space now. I've really been using it. Um, I just feel very inspired in here. So it's been really fun. But today I wanted to do just a quick little video. I know uh, things are kind of slowing down um, as we get closer and closer to winter. Um, it's kind of been strange here in Minnesota. Our weather has gone from blizzard to 60 degrees to overnight frosts and right now we're kind of sitting pretty steadily in the 40s during the day. That's our daytime high generally. High 30s, low-ish low 40s. So I thought that, you know, I'm not going to have too many new plants to show you. I'm not going to be doing too many hauls in the near future, for the foreseeable future. Although, I know I posted a video also recently about how it's my final plant haul of 2020 with the very strong disclaimer that if I saw plants that I did genuinely want, I wasn't going to restrict myself in any way. I wasn't on a plant ban per se. Just logistically, shipping plants to Minnesota in the winter is tricky. Um, so I was going to definitely cut back. <laughs> that said, I found some. So I might have one more plant haul coming, um, potentially, quite soon. So we'll see how they do. We'll see how they get to me. I ship. I ordered and sh and they shipped in kind of a good weather window here. It's still fairly warm for November, end of November in Minnesota. So that being said, plant tours and hauls and stuff will probably be slowing down a little bit, but I did want to share with you some of my staple products and supplies that I use for my plants. Um, I'm not sure that I've ever done this type of video before. I know I've done grow lights and some winterizing tips and tricks um, to that effect, videos to that effect, but I don't think I've really ever shared with you some of my staple supplies that I keep on hand always and that I use with most if not all of my plants, um, even though I have several, several different uh, varieties and uh, genera of plants that require different care, um, I still have those staples on hand um, that I use for all of them. But we'll kind of get into that. I'd like to just share with you some of the supplies that I use uh, frequently with most if not all of, of my plant collection. So let's get into that. First on my list, probably most important is a watering can and a good one. I really prefer the ones with the long narrow spout because this really is helpful for when you are watering in tight places or with small plants that you kind of want to do precision watering for so that you don't get water all over your furniture. Um, I have a lot of wood furniture that my plants are on. Obviously they're on either plastic or ceramic uh, glazed saucers uh, to protect the surface of the wood, but all that gets thrown out the window if you end up just spilling water everywhere when you are giving them a drink. So I prefer this one. This is just a, a cheap, cheapish gold one. Um, I picked up, I think this one at Target. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, it has the narrow, um, the narrow spout here, and it holds, I don't know, about a quart? I'm really bad at quantities and measurements, um, but yeah, I think it's about a quart that it holds. 
Uh, so that's kind of a downside. It's not as big as, you know, some of the watering cans I've seen out there where it can hold a lot more water, but it gets the job done. Um, for the plants that I water with um, purified water, I just keep, you know, jugs of that on hand and I fill this and refill it when needed. Um, for the plants in general that I water, um, my tap water isn't the greatest. So I do end up using the filtered water out of my refrigerator. And so I, I stock up a lot ahead of time, ahead of watering days with um, just empty, like purified water jugs. I'll just fill them up from the fridge, let them sit in, in the jugs until watering day. And then that's what I use on my plants. Um, I rarely use tap water just because the quality of my water isn't the greatest. Another thing that I keep on hand a lot of are trays. So these are for a very obvious reason, very obvious purpose, and that is to protect my wood tabletops and shelves from water. Um, I do a lot of repurposing. I do a lot of thrifting with pottery and that type of um, thing. So I'm always looking for like old dishes or saucers to use kind of as those protective trays. I always go for the glazed surface if I can because that way you know that you're, it's, the water isn't going to seep into any porous clay surfaces and then eventually onto your tabletop. Um, in addition to the pottery, I also keep these pretty cheap plastic trays on hand in a pinch. If I don't have any nice, you know, pottery, if this is all being used up, which right now I just acquired quite a bit of this um, Francoma. So uh, I use this pretty frequently around my house, but in a pinch I will use these because they are also good for hanging plants. They'll catch the water. And if you're like me and you don't want to take your plants off of the hanger and out of the whatever, you know, contraption you have it hanging in, um, and you just want to water it in place, you have something that will help catch that. So trays is another staple uh, of what I tend to keep on hand. Another must have for me and my plants are cash pose. You also hear them referred to as cover pots. So I am one of those people who really appreciate having a lot of my plants in plastic pots. Um, if those are plant pots like this that are actually meant to be, you know, the pot, but this is kind of a funny example because technically I do plant in these, um, these plastic kind of decorative, more decorative looking pots. Um, I plant directly into them, especially like with Hoya. I like to have my Hoya in plastic just so I'm able to gauge um, their levels of dryness. But in this particular case, this plastic pot I'm using as a cash pot because I have this Hoya, this uh, Pubicalyx Red Buttons, in a grow pot, just a nursery pot. And that's because they're just, I don't like to repot these right away. Some of them, even when I do repot them, I will use the, the nursery pots because they're lightweight and they really just help me, you know, gauge a Hoya's level of of dryness and whether or not they're ready for water. So this is kind of a funny example, but <laughs> technically I do pot in these plastic pots directly. Um, I do have some of my Hoya directly potted into these types of pots, but um, for this purpose, I also use them as cash pose. They often have these little saucers that go with them. I have only really ever found these in the terracotta color or gray, um, which yeah, I don't really have any that I could pull down. Actually, I do. My Scandaptus pictus argyreus. Um, this one's potted directly into this plastic pot. So I found them in this gray color too. Um, these I usually get from my local garden center. They have them readily available. This is getting long. I think it likes the spot up here. So in addition to plastic though, whether it's those more decorative planter pots or just a generic general nursery pot that the plant came in, uh, I do like to uh, put those types of plants in those types of pots into something a little bit more decorative and a little bit more my eclectic style. 
I should say it's eclectic thrift store. <laughs> it's kind of what I've landed on. Um, but this is a good example right here. So I have this Hoya Macrophylla Variegata potted up into this, just this plastic. I think this was a hanging pot, but it's also considered a nursery pot, I believe. But I have pottery. I collect vintage and thrifted pottery. Um, and so something like this is perfect for something like this. And it just sits there and then I know that my surface is protected. The inside of this pot is glazed so we're good to go there. So this is, uh, I have pottery all over my house and it's in different colors and styles. I do gravitate a lot toward neutrals with my pottery um, but you know I, I, I do collect pottery in general so if it speaks to me chances are I will get it and put a plant in it. I also use, this is kind of fun, different metal tones. So copper, silver, gold uh, metals I have kind of distributed all over my house. This is a Moscow Mule mug, I believe, this copper mug um, that kind of fits these three and a half inch or three inch um, nursery pots fairly well. Um, this is a little Hoya Australis I have growing in there. It's doing pretty well. Little, this is a cutting off of my mother plant. And then I also, uh, when it comes to cash bows, I do, it's, it's a lot of ceramics and pottery. Um, I do have plants in terracotta as well, but those tend to be more of my succulents, my cacti, uh, my jungle cacti actually though, I do have in like an epiphytic mix, but also in terracotta pots. Um, I kept that pretty consistent for them. Um, but yeah, any kind of neutral ceramic I'm really into. Aside from ceramic and metals though, I do also appreciate, and this is maybe a little controversial because it is wood. Wood cash bows. I love the, the look and the tones and the textures of wood. So I definitely try and incorporate that where I can. Obviously this one isn't quite big enough to fit this, this, um, this nursery pot with this Norfolk Island pine and it is a little bit tall. But I do, you know, it sits in there reasonably well. And all I have in there, it's kind of gross, just dirty. In the bottom is a cut out, uh, I believe this was a liter bottle of some, or it could have been a tray that had a lip on it. And I just cut the lip of the tray off um, so that it would sit. And it fits perfectly in this size cash po. I think, what is this, like a, an eight inch? Maybe six or eight inch, I think it's an eight inch. Um, and then, yeah, I just set the, the plant in its original nursery pot directly into the cash po. And uh, I love it, I love the look of it. I'm trying to remember, I think I got this one at a local store here in my town. It was just a local decor um, home goods store. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it is around anymore uh, due to reasons. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely I love styling my plants and finding cash pose, something to house them in that's going to protect the surfaces they're resting on, but it's also going to look good and kind of make me feel joyful just looking at it. I want it to be aesthetically pleasing for me and most of my Hoyas are in cash pose. I have very few Hoyas that are uh, planted directly into the outer pot that they are residing in. Like I said, most of them are in plastic. Um, that's really a personal choice, but another must have for me specifically with my Hoyas are bamboo trellises. So let me go get those. So I managed to find some really cool bamboo trellises. Um, I'd originally gotten, I think, a few off of Amazon, but then I realized that one of the sellers um, that I shop with um, for Hoya, Unsolicited Plant Talks, they also sell these on their site. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm going to support them versus the Amazon behemoth. Um, so yeah. Um, they also have these really cool hoop-shaped ones, the circular ones, and they have the elongated, longer, higher, taller. What's the, what's the adjective? Taller trellises? Here we go. 
So yeah, I have a lot of Hoya on these. Um, they're just really handy. I, I feel like I love Hoya, but I don't like chaos. Hoyas definitely require some, some degree of uh, structure or containment in order to be able to function as houseplants, in my opinion. Some people really do like to just let them go everywhere. It, for me, it just makes it makes it harder for me to care for them if I can't untangle them or kind of contain them in some way. So I do have a lot of my Hoyas, especially the ones that have started vining. I have a lot of small Hoya, but um, some of the ones that have kind of taken off and started vining, I definitely get on a trellis as soon as I can. And they seem to do really well once they have something to kind of latch onto and climb around. I'll show you. This is my Hoya Australis, the mother plant of that cutting that I showed you. And so this is a good example. It's just really kind of taken off here. And again, this is a cash po. I have this Hoya hanging out in a, in a nursery pot. So yeah, it's just hanging out in the nursery pot. And then I have the trellis just stuck directly into the soil. And I think when I got it into this into this situation with the trellis, it wasn't that big. I was able to kind of manipulate the vines a little bit, but it found its own way really. And when it gets to the top here, I just kind of help it, gently help it find the trellis again so it's not branching out crazily. Um, kind of keep it, keep it climbing and it seems to do really well when it's, when it's climbing like that. So yes, this is my Hoya Australis on a bamboo trellis, which is another item that I really can't do without. Okay, for the rest of the supplies that I want to show you, you're going to have to come with me. We have to go mobile. So let's go. Here's another thing I really can't do without. <laughs> In the winter especially. This is going to save some plant lives, let me tell you. But yeah, I feel like a humidifier is a must. And I've kind of arranged some of my more humidity-loving plants around it. Moved this. This used to be in my plant room, but I found that it was getting... You know, it was nice in there. The, they liked the level of humidity, but it wasn't running a lot because that space is so small. Um, and so the water was just kind of sitting in it, stagnant almost, um, for longer periods of time. So I thought maybe it would be better to use this one in a larger space. So that's really what I've been doing lately, and it seems to be really, really be working. Um, this is in my living room on my big plant table and I've moved some of my more humidity loving plants around it and it seems to be really working out well. And then I have a smaller humidity uh, or a smaller humidifier in my uh, my main plant room where a lot of my Hoyas are. But yes, this is definitely a must have for me as well. I think I have three humidifiers that I use on a regular basis. And then I also have one smaller desktop one um, that I use occasionally um, on my office desk. I'm not sure any of you guys really are prepared or want to see this, but I'm going to show you my plant supply drawer. Prepare yourselves. This is a nightmare mess. <laughs> And I think this is also going to be a winter project. I think I definitely need to get this under control. So far, this is, it's a big built-in pantry. Um, so I have hound dog supplies in here. I have some canning supplies in here. And then just some of my larger, like, accoutrement for my kitchen that just don't fit on my counters all of the time. So I really need to organize this closet, <laughs> especially when it comes to my plant supplies. This is nuts. I don't know if you can even see in here what's going on, but um, yuck. So of course I have my soil. The soil that I prefer is Espoma. And I have been running into some trouble finding any of their actual like organic potting mix. 
Um, so I've been making do with my Espuma Orchid Bark, which for some reason I'm able to find a little bit better. Um, the Perlite I was able to find again. I have some Vermiculite on hand. Um, and then, unfortunately, I am kind of back to using miracle Grow uh, potting mix in lieu of the Espoma, but I've used miracle Grow in my plants before. I am not judgmental about, you know, for people who use this, it's totally fine. Um, really, if you pick it up at a local nursery, it's probably better than ordering any type of soil online because if they're sitting in a warehouse, <laughs> you can run into some issues. You know, if, if these are sitting in warehouses for an extended period of time, they can really develop pest issues within the soil. Um, that's a big problem that people who've ordered, even a Spoma online, have talked about, is that you can, you know, you open the bag and it's just this cloud of fungus gnats. Um, that can happen, um, especially if it's kind of been exposed to like dark, moist um, environments. Um, so if it's sitting in a warehouse, it can do the job. Um, so I like to get mine local if I can. What else do I have in here? Holy moly. So over here are my pest control products. So that kind of ties in here. I use concentrate of neem oil. Neem oil. Um, you can get it in the spray bottle. I like the concentrate. It seems to go a little bit farther for me when I'm using it. Um, and then I can, I can make, you know, small doses of it um, at a time. So I'm not kind of <laughs> making my home smell like neem. Um, something else I use um, that's a Bonide product is, this is what I use for my cuttings. I, I stick to the Bontone um, rooting powder. This has worked really, really well for me, and it's worked for me um, in sphagnum moss uh, propagations and also in water propagations. This works really well. Another thing I have back here, let's see, I like to use, as far as insecticidal soap goes, I use the Safer brand when I can and this it's a uh, kind of a gentle a gentle soap that um, has seaweed extract in it and basically it's I think it's organic yep for organic gardening what other goodies do I have in here let's see um I keep a couple of ice cream pails on hand for mixing soil. So if I am potting several types of the same plant at the same time, um, I will use a bucket to kind of mix up the, the mix that I like to, to have. Like, for example, Hoya, you know, I'll, I'll use my mix and I put it together in a bucket and then I have soil or, you know, potting medium for several plants if needed. What other goodies do I have in here? Holy moly. This is kind of embarrassing, but not really, because it's just kind of where all of this stuff ended up. So these lights, <laughs> um, these are the lights that I use uh, for st seed starting indoors. Um, so these are the red and blue um, spectrum lights. I have one, two, three, three clip-on, three clip-on light systems here, and I think two of them Two of them have three lamps on them, and one of them has two lamps on them. And these work okay. I mean, they're not they're not anything fancy, um, but they were nice and compact and um, kind of interchangeable. I could move them around um, based on where I put the seeds. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm envisioning a similar setup for later in the winter, early spring, potentially to get some stuff started indoors um, for my veggie garden. So. Right now they live here, <laughs> but grow lights are another staple for me. Um, so these all used to be used for house plants, and then I switched over to kind of a full spectrum light, so it wasn't just that glaring purple color. Um, so that's what I use in, around my home, but these lamps I've held onto for seed starting purposes. This is like, this is a whole project, you guys. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video of me reorganizing this nonsense because it's got to happen. <laughs> it's got to happen anyway. Let me know if you want to see it. And then 
I also just have this little cup full of various accoutrement in here. So like straws I used to use for um, plant tags. I'm still trying to figure out a way to repurpose these because I don't like throwing straws away. I don't like using plastic straws. I've got an old makeup brush, a clean one that I use to like um, dust off plant leaves and dust soil off of plants. Um, I have some measuring spoons that I use for neem oil um, when I'm mixing up that concentrate. I have these little, these little wooden dowels that I would also use for plant tags. And I've got these little brushes um, for cleaning humidifiers and all of that jazz. So just miscellaneous plant supplies. This is a good one too. I, I found these little plastic tags. Um, these I found at the dollar store several months ago. Um, but these have been really great for labeling some of my larger plants. I've been able to, to just stick these in the pot with them. So that's been pretty fun. They're nice. Kind of an upgrade from the straws. <laughs> but yes, I'm still trying to find a purpose for these. So yeah, just my little bag, my little bag of stuff. But it's kind of a mess in here. But yeah, right now this is where I keep all of my soil and my, um, my plant medicine, I guess you could say. Another thing that's back here is the fertilizer I use. So I'm starting to slow down on this um, now that we're getting into the winter season, but uh, definitely um, I'm a fan of the Espoma indoor houseplant uh, fertilizer. And this is nice because it's a self-dosing bottle. It's really easy to um, to make to mix this up and I just mix it with water and then put it in my watering can and make the rounds. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to subscribe down below. If you have any plant products that you can't do without and you'd like to share, let me know down in the comments. Really interested to see what other people are doing and what, and what works for you with your plants. Uh, so just let me know. That's all for me today, guys. I hope you're doing well, and until next time, enjoy your plants.